And then all of a sudden they walked up closer and it's like, oh shit, it's, it's a dude. Call it ignorance, I guess, because I had no exposure to any trans people at all, to be honest. Holy shit, that's fucking crazy. I mean, shit, I, I learned some stuff when I was growing up. I remember what my dad used to say. I remember what my mom used to say. If anybody doesn't have anybody to look up to, then how do they even know how to get through what they're going through? By unlearning what it is that we've learned, that's the only way we'll be able to understand what people are going through. The ways in which trans people have been represented have suggested that we're mentally ill that we don't exist and yet here we are and we've always been here what's going on guys right Durazi here and I'm here with my barber Eugene Torres Eugene say hi hey Recently, we both took the time to watch a little movie on Netflix called Disclosure, and it's about trans representation in media. I know it changed my view of trans people in a lot of ways. I know it had the same impact on Eugene, and so I thought it would be a great idea if we got together and recorded a little vlog about it for you guys. The shop's right here on La Brea, and it's basically West Hollywood, Hollywood. And there's a lot of people, we get a lot of foot traffic here. Some of these people are trans, for sure. I've noticed just being here in your chair that, well, you notice all the ladies that walk by. All oh, the yeah. looking ladies. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and and catcalling and stuff like that. Right. I just, I remember, I think specifically it was, there was like three, three trans people walking by and um, I had asked, I think, about like, how, I mean, what, I, he, she, yeah, 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 yeah. like, that was, that was, I think, one of our first conversations about it. And I think I started, I mentioned, you know, the, their pronouns. Right. If they are transitioning from a male to a female, then their pronouns are associated with female, presumably, unless they prefer they, them, which is also the thing. Yes. But, and for me, like, I really didn't, I had very little exposure to the trans community until last August when I started working for Peppermint. Um, Peppermint is obviously, she's amazing. She's a huge Broadway performer. She was on RuPaul's Drag Race season nine. She was the, the star. And now I've, you know, I've been working with her lately and we've been doing a lot of stuff together. So that's really cool. But it's exposed me to a lot. Yeah, that, I don't know, that just stood out to me that it was like, we're in this really masculine atmosphere, which is a barber shop with right. black and Latinx people. And that's very like hyper masculine. and. So to be catcalling at like women that go by and then to see a trans woman and be like, oh, oh, that's a he, no, that's a she. Ah. Right, it, it's, a, it's, it's a thing actually because, because of where I am, where we are out the corner, we can see across the street, of course, but there's been uh, numerous times where it's like, it's one of the guys has been like, oh, check her out, you know? And I, I know that I've caught it earlier than everybody else did, so I'd be like, well, just wait till she gets a little closer, because you just don't know, yeah. you know? But they'd be like trying to, you know, look at a girl, and be like, oh man, look at her, like she's got this, she's got that. And then all of a sudden they walk up closer and it's like, oh shit, it's, it's a dude, you know? And it's like, well, is it, is it a dude? Like, I mean, that, that's the whole thing where it came with the verbiage, like he, she, yeah. like, I, I call it ignorance, I guess, because yeah. there's no, never had, like you say, you didn't have exposure. I, I had no exposure to any trans, people at all to be honest until literally recently taking over yeah. this shop last october would be one of the first times when that started happening and it's important to know that distinction between a man dressing up as a woman like drag right and then a man who now identifies as a woman and right. is a woman for all intents and purposes which watching disclosure also <laughs> so tell me about that yeah i mean <laughs> so like what you're yeah because i i watched it with pep and i was like i know i teared up multiple times throughout and yeah it like really had an impact on me right i uh personally i i've always felt that i'm very very empathetic of an empath you know and so uh when i watch things like that on which looking at you people might not assume right away. <laughs> that, that's your opinion, Reeve. <laughs> you're intimidating looking, but like if, if yeah. someone sits down and talks to you for like 30 seconds, they're like, okay, this guy's a giant teddy bear. <laughs> yeah, give me a big hug, yes. <laughs> so yeah, I'm very much an empath. And so when watching documentaries, mostly, I mean shit, watching dance competition shows, they get like, oh, oh. I mean, because they're, you know, they're, there's so much dedication yeah. and so much, you know, everything they're putting into it. So, so when watching this, yeah, I, right away, I was in the first, 
I think the what would be called the intro, which is like 10 minutes, it was just like it's very almost overwhelming because the emotions that uh, these particular people are going through and what they need to, to change or how they feel inside versus how they look on the outside and then uh, going through the process and everything they had to go it's just like get the chills thinking about it right now I just I just can't even imagine like what that would be like you know um, you, there's enough problems that you have to deal with being a human being in general that <clears throat> trying to fulfill your own personal dreams or what it is that your your goals are personally because you don't feel right doing the things that you're doing um, that you're being told you should do I mean that's it's just got to be over like extremely overwhelming so right away I was I was, I was emotional when it came to it. Yeah, I'm not much of a crier. I get to that point where I'm like, you know, I want to cry and I'm sure if I just let myself cry, maybe I would. But, <laughs> but it, it really, it got me to like tears where I was, you know, like, oh, I just can't believe that this is the kind of stuff that they have to go through because I could never, I mean, I cry and complain about my bullshit sometimes and it's like, yeah, right. <laughs> the, the amount of, you know, internal, you know, problems that they had going through and not to mention externally as well it, it's 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 literally overwhelming it's it's a lot so and also when you factor in being black oh yeah with black lives matter a lot of times you, you'll see black trans lives matter too because it's that's like I, one of the one of the people on the uh the documentary he's like so what is my black trans ass is gonna be you know like how am i supposed to feel and it's like yeah, yeah i mean i it's it sucks because you don't you don't really want to say double whammy, you know what I mean? Like, oh, fuck, you got that and that? Like, Jesus. But unfortunately, that's the society that we live in, and it's the truth. Being black and being queer has a lot of problems. And then black, queer, trans? Yeah. Which is, but that's just so much more. It's like a whole, yeah. other, a whole other step, right? I mean, yeah. yeah, so it was, uh, it was pretty crazy just when I watched it. The big thing that stood out for me was when they showed the scenes from Ace Ventura. Yeah. Pet detective. Right. And I forget who the character is. Is she a detective as well? Yeah. Finkel yeah. is Einhorn. Einhorn is Finkel. But then it's found out later in the film that she is trans. Right. She was the the kicker of the team that lost or whatever. Oh, okay. She was the Dolphins kicker, place yeah. kicker, and he he missed the field goal for the win. And then he, he is a she though, right? Right. Yeah. And then and the fact that like people who are trans have been portrayed as like disgusting basically and how after Ace Ventura realizes Jim Carrey's character realizes that he made out with a trans person that he's like so ill by that that he's like retching and vomiting and everybody in that scene starts spitting and vomiting yeah, it's just like, Ventura's you know crazy uh, brushing his teeth yeah. in the shower and crying and, and I thought that was so funny growing up I, I'm not gonna lie I mean and again that you know I've learned in my older age it's like it's a lot of ignorance because I don't because yeah. I'm just but I'm, I wasn't aware and that's that's like one of the things that they mentioned at the beginning of the of the uh, documentary was that like 80% of Americans have never even come in contact with a trans person you know so so not knowing that, you know, you're watching Jim Carrey busting up, busting up laughing, and of yeah. course, you know, then you think about it, and then after I watched, literally, like you said, that scene, yeah. after I watched that scene, like, I fucking felt horrible, <laughs> like, I really did, like, I felt like a real asshole, because I thought that was the funniest shit ever, like, I mean, I've even referenced it plenty of times, you know, but, I, because I never thought of another, anybody else's emotions when it comes to that. And I think as a collective, People have been very ignorant. Like you, you see in the in the movie that even was it Oprah and then yeah. Oh, yeah. Katie Couric yep. were asking really insensitive questions and immediately wanting to make the conversation about what's underneath your clothes, yes. yep. and that's not anybody's business. Right. It has nothing to do with that person being trans. And it changes later down yeah. the line when they interview later. Absolutely. Yeah, which is why I wanted to talk to you because. You're someone who I've seen grow and evolve over time, and you're interested in that. You want to become a better person, right. and so if someone you that whom I see as like a really masculine yes. guy, right? <laughs> if you can so like you. change and evolve and, yeah. and you know learn about things like that, then right. why can't other people? And if other people like guys like you can see you and be like, oh, this dude's open about it and maybe that'll like open some minds. I completely agree. And I, um, again, in my older age, I've learned to accept that, that uh, I am 
you know, I am a leader, like I am kind of, I'm an alpha male. And so there are a lot of things that, you know, what I have in my reach, I have an influence on, you know? So just like even when I did watch it, I was watching it with a friend of mine, her cousin and her cousin's boyfriend. So what was the, what was the conversation when you decided to have, watch this movie with them? Oh, well, I was like, we were looking for something to watch because we were in Big Bear and there's like, you know, we were just in the cabin chilling and, uh, and I was, they were like, well, what should we watch now? And I was like, you know, like, so my client, my boy Rafe, he was telling me about this, uh, this documentary about, about transgender people and like how um, that's going to be the narrative, you know, as far as, um, you know, civil rights, things like that, things that are happening at this very moment with Black Lives Matter and, you know, everything that's just been happening in, in the past, you know, three, six months, fuck, I don't know, all the years basically, but right now how intense everything is. Yeah. And uh, you told me that that was going to be the narrative because you told me about Peppermint, you know, we have our conversations. I was, so I told them about it and they were like, and I said, I don't know, I mean, it's about, you know, transgender, like, I mean, it's a lot of information apparently that it's supposed to be really, really good. And, uh, you know, if you guys are interested, they're like, oh, they started, you know, looking it up, found it. And I was like, well, cool. This, you know, are you guys? They're like, yeah, they just clicked it on and started watching it. And so we started watching it and like, you know, 25 minutes into it, probably like everybody was kind of quiet, you know, and I was just like, and I was totally quiet because I was watching it, which I should have already clicked in my head that they're quiet because they're watching it too. But, it, you know, because I'm so like. I hope everything's okay. You yeah. know what I mean? Like worried. Were you worried that maybe they were like, I don't know what this is? Well, I, I was just, I didn't want anybody to be, first of all, bored. And I didn't also didn't want anybody to be uncomfortable, you know? But, but then again, thinking about it, saying it right now, it's like, why should I feel like they were uncomfortable when this is something that we should all know about? You know what I mean? And even uh, the gentleman that was there, he's, you know, snowboarder dude. Like, you know, he's very, what I would say, like a manly dude, you know, yeah. like he doesn't, you don't see him being very feminine in a sense, I guess. Um, and I was like, hey, are you, are you cool with watching this, you know? And like, are you guys okay? I go, we could totally change it if you guys want to. And he was the first one to say, no, 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 leave it on, dude. This is, this is really good. I, I, know, like, I, have, I know nothing about this whatsoever. And he's like, and I, I have no exposure to any of this. This is really this is good. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and then of course, awesome. and the girls were just like, no, 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 yo, no, we want to watch it. And I was like, good, I'm glad. And so, even with just like three people, you know, like I was able to influence them to, to watch something that I hadn't even watched, but I wanted to watch it with, you know, we all watched it together. And they were really impressed. They were very like, you know, emotional about it. And you know, they, I wish I could have sat down with him too, like to get his opinion because he literally didn't get up once. He sat there and watched it the whole time. I mean, of course we all, we all did. Pretty interesting. They all really enjoyed it. You know, they all really, it, and not like a, oh my God, I really like this. It was just like, Holy shit! <laughs> like, yeah. what, I mean, that's fucking crazy. And it's like, yeah, I know. I mean, were you guys aware watching it that every single person that was on camera was? <laughs> I told them that as it started, because that because you had told me. I was like, every single one of them. Cause I remember even you said like maybe like a couple of them you can kind of. He's like, but most of them you can't even yeah. tell that they are transgender at all. Yeah. They're trans. It's, I guess it's not surprising, but it was kind of surprising for me because I just never paid attention. But. Um, you know, as, as far as Hollywood goes back, it's been portraying a trans person yeah. as exactly that. Like, it's usually some like manly looking man, obviously, and then they throw like a dress on him. Yeah. And, and, like, and like they said in the, the documentary, they always portrayed him as being like, you know, uh, mentally ill, like crazy, like literally crazy, um, you know, murderers, uh, just, you know, disgusting people and all, all these different things. So the Hollywood used that as part of their, you know, uh, their storylines, I guess you could say for their, you know, for their movies and for their TV shows. And it's pretty messed up, <laughs> like, cause they're not, they don't care about anybody's feelings, but they're just trying to make some money. It was very eye opening when it comes to all that. And it's so important to have, because the movie focuses on specifically representation in media and Hollywood, films and television. And so as a kid, if you are, if you're trans, you know that there's something different about you and you're looking for something to relate to on TV or in film, and all you see is this segment of the population that's laughed at or that's crazy psycho killer. Or, yeah. Uh, Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. That was one that they talked about. That was all, I love that song, Goodbye Horses. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, but that song does take me back to that scene at the same time. And you think about that. And then now, I look at it now on the reverse side, you know, after seeing this thing, this uh, uh, documentary, I was just like, wow. <laughs> like, that's, that's crazy. That's fucked up. I mean, really what it is. Uh, but like what you were saying, uh, a lot of people, they were saying like the whole like 80% of Americans don't even know anybody. Like, fuck. 
how does those trans people they, they see this image of the, of what they yeah. want to or not what they want to be but like you know an image of how they feel mm-hmm. on television but they have nobody else that they can like look up to yeah. or nobody to talk to about it because they didn't even know anybody that really tripped me out when I was watching that I was like that really kind of broke my heart. It's heartbreaking because I've never had that contact or that conversation with yeah. any trans people whatsoever. Yeah. As far as I know, I mean, you know what I mean? Exactly. That's the other thing, like I don't, don't the, know, the, yeah. yeah, because the whole thing about, uh, what was her name, Sandra Caldwell? Like her not saying anything for oh, okay. years and years and years, just she yeah. continued to work and be in Hollywood and stuff and never once came out about it until you know, a few years ago, <laughs> whatever it was. I'm not even, maybe it was a year ago or yeah, something. Well, she, she was saying like, cause she was passing, right. which means people couldn't tell. And so it was just easier to just blend in. Right, and just get just by. Blend in, and that's it. And so she never had a, she didn't have a vo- her voice was never, you know, heard up until recently. When she said, she started seeing, you know, everybody that was like, oh wait, they're doing this? Like, oh, we're doing this, we're doing that? Like, I need, like, okay, it's time for me to say something. And it seemed like she kind of realized that she has like kind of a responsibility Want to be exactly. a, a, a visible role model. Absolutely. Because there isn't, if you don't have, again, if anybody doesn't have anybody to look up to, then how do they even know how to get through what they're going through? So. Do you think that if more people are exposed to movies like Disclosure and more trans people, do you think that that would impact the way that they view the trans community in general and trans rights and like things like having gender neutral restrooms or allowing a trans woman to go into the woman's restroom and stuff like that. Of course, like my hope is that yes, that that would change, that that would uh, impact people to have different views, and feel, not, even, not even opinions, but views and feelings about, you know, just, just humans, <laughs> you know what I mean? And unfortunately, I don't believe I just don't believe that the human race as a whole uh, can change that drastically, that quickly. I mean, I would do my best to, like, even just earlier today with my last client, who's a friend of yours as well, Sam. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, Sam's very, yeah, he's... A pretty masculine dude, too. Yeah, he's a, he's a masculine dude. <laughs> masculine. Whatever that means. <laughs> whatever, the, whatever that means. Um, but when I started talking to him about what we're about to do, yeah. and then when I spoke to him about disclosure, and then explained to him what it was about, and the information that you would receive and um, you know the different views and like the understanding that you would get from it the empathy that you'll probably have by watching it because you know, nobody as a human being wants to be treated like shit so if you're if you can grasp the fact that you're a human being and so is everybody else who's different but just not like you but we're all humans well they have everybody else the same feelings that you do you know and he literally was like, what is it called again? And I was like, Disclosure. And I was like, dude, really, you should really watch it. I mean, it's, it'll be, it, it'll be uh, um, informative for you, you know, and it'll probably change your perspective on things. Not to say he even has a perspective on it because I've never even had, had a conversation about it with him because. Yeah. I mean, then, I get, then again, it's like everyone has some level of perspective on it just from unconscious bias. Correct. Right. Based unconscious on bias. what movies we've seen Absolutely. in TV shows. And yes. that's what we have to like identify and unravel and then like re figure out yeah it's like it's like yeah. it's all stuff that we've learned it's yeah. not we're not born with like any sort of racism or bigotry or you know anything it's we're not we're not born with it we're, we learn it you know and i mean shit, I, I learned some stuff when i was growing up i remember what my dad used to say i remember what my mom used to say you know what i mean like and and you know and now being a, a man and, you know and, and having a son and all that like you know, they're, obviously their opinions have changed over years, you know, but you have to unlearn it. So by unlearning what it is that we've learned, that's the only way we'll be able to have a clearer conscience to understand what people are going through. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's really crazy, but that's what it is. It's unlearning it because it's a learned trait. It's nothing else. Like, and nobody's like born like, oh, I, I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you do. <laughs> well, thank you for having this chat with me. I think it's really important. And I think a lot of people can benefit from watching it. Not just people like you, but to see other people in the LGBTQ community be able to see you know, a guy like you who's very progressive and open-hearted. Yes. And willing to learn and grow is really like, 
inspiring and it's hope, it brings a lot of hope. I appreciate that. I, I never look at it that way. I just always, you know, it it's just how I feel. Uh, Eugene's super supportive of the community. His, his shop is really open. Got the big flag. Got the big flag, rainbow flag with the BLM. The BLM on it. Yeah, I love that thing. It's nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I would love to continue this and do more conversations about all your stuff like this. Anytime. Don't say that. <laughs> oh man, here we go, man. You're gonna get, you're gonna get yourself in trouble. <laughs> Fucking rave. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this conversation. I think we need to be having way more conversations just like this. It's not just protesting and marching on the street, but one on one amongst ourselves, having an important dialogue. And I have a lot more of this coming for you. I'm excited to bring it to you. Please give me your feedback. I want to hear it. Like this video if you liked it. Share it. Please share it with other people who would appreciate it. And I'll see you guys soon. Awesome. That was great. Of course. That was great.